Well, I don't know about you, but uh, I've had quite enough of upright cleaners on the channel recently. So I suggest we check out this boxed Hoover Compact S3196. <laughs> I was thinking the other day um, when it sort of occurred to me to do a video on this cleaner, I don't think I've ever actually plugged this this particular machine in. I've had it now for about, oh, must be eight years or so, I suppose. I think I've taken it out of the box once, but I don't think I've ever actually used it. I don't think I've ever plugged it in. I know I, know I haven't used it, um, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't even know if it runs. Um, I think it's complete. I don't think the instruction book's in the box, but um, yeah, I, I don't even know if it works. So we'll find out in this video. So this is a really early Mark I compact. And I think we can probably tell that because of this sticker here on the box. So this is, this is telling us something. So we've got new, Nuvo, Novita and new, which is Scottish, maybe? I don't know. Um, yeah, so it's pretty cool, actually. The box is not in too bad a con condition, to be honest with you. I mean, it, it, you know, it's... I'm, I'm going to guess now, because I don't know, as, as I'm filming this portion of, of the video, what year this is. So I'm going to guess it's 1982. So that would make this machine 38 years old. Um, and it's a 38-year-old box as well, which is quite impressive. You don't tend to see them still in their boxes after all this time. It's quite something. And I think most of the packaging is in there too. We'll, we'll have a look when we take it out. And it's quite a cool box. So obviously you have this side here with, with the new um, sticker on it. And then you have a picture of the compact here uh, showing the floor tool and, and the... the the rods. Then on this side you've got a lady's hand with very nicely painted fingernails, um, obviously showing that uh, it's light and it's portable and it's a compact cleaner. And you also have this really cool little flap which opens up and there's a plastic handle inside so you can carry the box like a suitcase. <laughs> you don't see that anymore, it's, uh, it's pretty cool. And then we have four pictures on this side which um, show the bag. Uh, and the super long stretch hose, the complete toolkit, and um, <clears throat> I'm not sure what she's doing there. I think she's um, attaching some rods together, maybe? Yeah, I think so. So I guess what we should do now is actually take the compact out of the box and um, yeah, see what kind of state it's in. Right, I've put the box on the floor so I can actually open it up from here and then uh, show you everything that's in it. It's got three of the four flaps on the top. One of the flaps is missing, which is a real shame. But we've got like the, we've got some cardboard there. That's not very interesting. And um, we have a flap that comes up here. You can just see that there in the shop. And I think actually, is that in the right place? Yeah, I think so. There's sort of like a indentation here in the flap, which goes onto the, onto the compact's handle. So the indentation of the flap goes onto the, onto the compact's handle and it kind of keeps it in place. So let's take the tools out first of all. So this this is not a new in-box cleaner by any means. This has been used, it's had a life. You can tell that it, it has it has had a life. Um, I don't know how how severe of a life it's had. Um, oh the brushes still work, that's, that's good. I wasn't sure they were going to then. But here's the original Hoover floor head. So this is the 70s style head. I think this was first introduced with Freedom, possibly 1978-ish, something like that. Because prior to this floor tool, it was the flip-over floor tool that um, the early 70s cleaners had. So yeah, this is nice. And we've got the floor tool, and we have a couple of rods. Oh yeah, you can see that there's been some use to the cleaner there. The, the, the rods are a bit scratched. So let's put the rods down there. Nice to have them both. Um, then we have some small tools. So we have the dusting brush. That's a proper, that's a proper dusting brush. That is, that's like that's the the old style rubberized coating to it. 
that has not been used. I swear to God, that has not been used. If I hold that, hold the brushes up to you there so you can see them. Look at that. That is absolutely pristine. And then we have the all-purpose tool. This hasn't seen much use either. I think it has been used because there's slight scratches on the on the shaft here. So then I think that 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 has been used. Um, and then we've got a crevice tool, genuine Hoover. That's nice to see. Um, again, hardly any use on that. Uh, then we have the flexible hose. So this is um, ooh, quite dusty. Let's see what this this is like. It's quite stiff actually. It's gone stiff over the years. Um, it looks like there was some tape around it at some point. I wonder why. Oh, there is a split here actually. Mm, that's a shame. There's a little split just here on the machine end. And it looks like someone's tried to get in there at some point because it's slightly bent. I mean, I think for our purposes, that's going to be okay. I don't think that's going to cause us any problems. But yeah, you can see where all the tape has gone around it and it's still sticky. Ugh, horrible. And then we have a pretty standard Hoover bent end. Yeah, there's still some flexibility in the hose. These hoses seem to be thicker than other hoses. I don't know if it's just because it's black. Um, you know, the, the cream ones and the white ones. Yeah. It just, it just feels, it feels s s stiffer to me. But, you know, oh, I don't know. Maybe I'm just making that up. So there's our toolkit, which is lovely. Um, I'm just going to have a look in the box, because I'm pretty sure there's no... Actually, there might be an in in instruction manual for this cleaner, but I have a feeling I took it out the box and I put it in my files. So, yeah, there's nothing else sort of paperwork related. Um, and then we have the compact itself. So here we go. Here's the star of the show. Nice to see that it's still got its wheels. They're the original wheels too, actually, because they've got the gold trim. So you can see the gold trim on them there. That means they are uh, original to the cleaner. And the, um, the flex is held together with an elastic band. We've got a non-sleeved plug here. So it obviously has been used at some point. And that's everything that's in the box. So yeah, here's our, here's our, our little compact. Let me move these out. Of the and we can take a better look at the compact itself. It is in quite nice shape, I will say. It's, um, yeah, it's quite nice. There are some scratches to it, some scratches, to mar scratches and marks. It's so basic. It's so incredibly basic. All this machine has is a power switch. There's no bag full here, um, slider. Uh, there's no power takeoff. There on the front, you see there's a molding for it just here. So that's where the power takeoff socket for the um, power head would be. Nothing, nothing like that. Um, yeah, it's quite nice. It's a nice green as well. I, I, I like the color, very 80s, very, very 80s. <laughs> Now, I've just noticed something interesting on the um, ratings plate. So we've got Hoover Model S3196, double insulated, made in France, as they all were. So Compact and Sensotronic were all French machines made in the Dijon factory, I believe. Uh, 700 watts, and then we have a serial number that says 402, which means this particular cleaner was manufactured in February of 1984. Now that is interesting because you would not expect the box to say new on it, unless this is a replacement model. So this could be a Mark 1.5 compact. And I have a funny feeling in my water that the very first compacts didn't come with this style floor tool. They came with the Porter Power style floor tool. And I, again, I think maybe the hose and the rods were cream. So this could be a Mark 1.5, but see again, it doesn't really justify the use of the word new, because it's not new, is it? It's, it's a... Um, existing model 
that's got a new toolkit or a, a different toolkit, shall we say. Let's have a look inside what we've got going on here. But again, very clean. That's very clean, the, the um, bag cover. Now we've got some date wheels here. Let me have a look. Try and get some light on it. Okay, okay. So this, this panel is date marked uh, December 1983. So that's when this particular panel was molded. Which, which uh, yeah. So if that they they don't just mold one and then and then mold this bit and then mold this bit and make it cleaner. They mold ten thousand of them in one go. All of these panels, ten thousand of of these panels. Then they use the panels to make the cleaner. Yeah, makes sense, doesn't it? So see this here. This is mm. now if you look at the bag. This is a genuine Hoover bag, but oddly, that's very strange. Look, the, the membrane has been stuck on the front of the cardboard. Normally this is sandwiched between two pieces of cardboard. But this is genuine Hoover, look, it's got the um, Hoover logo on it. Not got much in there, it the, looks like sawdust actually. Yeah, there's sawdust in that bag. Um, the bag itself is in really nice shape. Uh, but if you look here on the bag, so on the it, it lists all of the model, the, the Hoover Compact model numbers. And it starts with S3192, then S3194, then S3196. So this is a 3196. So does that mean there were two previous versions of this cleaner? Two, a 3194 and a 3192? I don't know, it's so hard to work out. It could be. You know, S3192 may well be the very first basic compact of, of this style. And then we go into 3196, which is a Mark 1.5. Who knows? Um, again, very clean in here. I mean, it's, it's really quite shocking. Let me hold that up to you. Look, there's hardly any dust or anything in there. That bag chamber is amazing. I mean, for the age of the cleaner, the, the the filter's nice too. So it's weird, isn't it? It's like it hasn't had much use. This sort of this part of the cleaner says I I haven't had much use at all. I mean, the fact it's got a genuine Hoover bag in it as well is quite un unusual. <coughs> but then the tools definitely show signs of use. I wonder if maybe it could have been used to clean out the car possibly or as um, a spare machine oh, who knows who knows it's it's um, difficult to tell isn't it so let's uh, let's plug it in because as I say to you I have no idea if this cleaner even works I'm pretty sure I well I'm, I'm not the kind of person who would put the who would have put the cable back like this I probably would have just chucked it in the box um, so can I take that off there uh, no, not easily. All right, well, never mind. <laughs> I thought I could take that band off, but no, I have, to, I have to stay on there. I wonder if it's actually the original band then. If that's the original band that would have been fitted in the factory. God, for that to have lasted 38 years, that is something else. And it's French. Um, right, let me just plug it in. Let me give it a little socket over here. And plug it in. Is it going to burst into life? Nope. Now obviously the suppressor is still in here and I haven't done anything to it so we could have a bang when we turn it on. Hopefully we, we won't, but uh, brace yourself. It doesn't sound too bad. Uh, yeah, quite surprised really. That that that, that sounds reasonable, I would say. It, it's a little a little bit dry. The bearings are a bit dry. You can hear a slight grumble there, um, but overall that is not bad. That's not bad at all. Now, I'm just looking in this grill here um, because uh, Mark One Compact and actually Mark Two 
as well had a a, a flaw in them you, you say yeah it's a it is a flaw because it's impossible to change the um, exhaust filter on these cleaners they are usually just like <laughs> that that horrible foam that I've shown you in previous videos that like the the dense foam that over time just crumbles away to nothing and that is what would have been fitted to this but that foam is actually missing um, you probably won't be able to see it or you might be able to no I don't think you can um, but you can actually see the cover of the motor which is like a cardboard it's um, cardboard with foam uh, on the underside of it and there should be a black piece of foam that is uh, is here under the grill now that acts as the um, exhaust filter and there is no way to access it you have to undo two screws here uh, and two screws here so you can flip this panel back and then you can get into the motor area now normally no no normal user would ever think that oh I need to take my vacuum cleaner apart to change the exhaust filter it just wouldn't happen would it it just would not happen um, so what used to happen over time was when the machine was used if the bag o overfilled um, if it if dirt and dust leaked around this um, membrane here uh, or the bag burst or you know it was just used for a long time the dirt and dust used to build up here on this um, exhaust filter which would reduce the efficiency of the cleaner and also potentially cause it to overheat certainly if it was run for long periods of time with a blocked um, exhaust filter if it had a blocked pre-motor filter if it had a reasonably full bag um, if it was being used you know in like uh, a big house or there was a big cleaning task that needed to be done and I have seen in the past Mark 1 compacts with uh, melted grills this one luckily has not had that ha happen to it but yeah because this plastic is not particularly thick it's not great quality um, the grill would melt because you know, the motor is sat here um, on the more luxury versions you had a flex rewind wheel here um, we, we don't have that in this one because it, it's the basic model um, but yeah this this grill would melt at this point and they would go quite badly they, sort of, they start like that and then they sort of dip dip down and then they'd like flex and then you'd get all this ugh, it looked awful absolutely awful luckily this one doesn't have that but yeah I don't think this this particular machine has had a great deal of use um, yeah so it's really nice it's a nice one to have in the collection certainly with its original box it is puzzling why this is 1984 and the box says new on it um, just checking the, mo the model number it is a 3196 the box says 3196 so it is not the original original um, basic compact I'm going to do some research actually and I've got some leaflets and just check out those tools because I've just got a funny feeling the original machines had the cream the cream tools because I know that the original Sensitronic machines uh, which were also launched in 82 had cream hose cream cream tools cream rods so it's odd that this has black and I just got this feeling in my water that uh, this is a mark 1.5 compact with that uh, misleading new sticker on the box but yeah there we go I must say it's nice to see it um, I haven't seen this cleaner for years a long long time uh, and I'm really surprised at how nice it actually is um, and the fact that it it runs nicely too so what I think we should do now is uh, I will stop waffling on as per usual we'll take it into the lounge give it a run um, thank you ever so much for watching uh, these crazy crazy videos of me rambling on about hoovers um, don't forget to do the uh, the commenting the subscribing and the liking because it really helps me out and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it Re I really really do so yeah let's get this in the lounge give it a run and I will see you in the next video. Take care, guys. Bye.
Okay, and now it's time for you guys to have a laugh at me trying to put this compact back in its box. Um, I think I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. I'm sure I can. So I think start with the hose. That has to go like that. And that goes down that way. Do you want to leave room for the rods? So they go down here. I'm going to move the hose a bit. Yeah. That side. Oh, almost. No. It's always so difficult trying to put things back in a box. They just drop there. And you've got to get the compact itself around the right way, which I think is this way. And that way. Oh, yeah. Bring the cable up like that. So then that's the split I was talking about that sort of goes on the handle and I think you put the floor tool here that kind of keeps it actually let's go that way plastic for plastic yeah that should do it and then this bit work here like that no, I I not, no that's not right what's it gonna mean it's hard it's hard how do you do this how did Hoover do it in the factory oh. I go like that. Oh, there we go. That might work better. I'll put the flex down there. No. All right, hang on. It went in. <laughs> oh, that's good. Hey, there we go. That's it. Goes like that. And goes like that. Like that. Like that. There we are, lovely. And um, we're back. <laughs> we're boxed up again, hooray! Okay, well, I, I must say, it's very powerful for a 700 watt motor. It actually, it works really well. If you were in the market for a budget cleaner back in the day in 82, 84, 85, this would have done you really well. I mean, there's no bells and whistles on it. There's nothing special about it, but if you want, if you wanted a cleaner to clean your carpets and your car and your chairs and your stairs and your curtains, well, you couldn't do much better than a Mark 1 Hoover Compact. Sleep well, old friend. See you in 10 years.